everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today we have another viewer requested topic and that's all about different types of colour bursts. So today we're talking about Brusho, we're talking about the Ken Oliver version and we're talking about tonic shimmer powders. So I know there are a few others but I think they're kind of the main three that you tend to see on the market. I have all of them here, I've played with all of them in different guises and at different times and so we're just going to go through them and kind of talk about the differences what I might prefer about one over the other, and a couple of different demonstrations. I'm also gonna show you my three favorite techniques that you can use with all of them across the board. Um, I'm gonna show you with just one of them, but you can absolutely use them with all of them. So let's talk about the three options first of all. So brush out is kind of the original. Um, we've all probably played with brush out at one time in the past. I know I used it when I was back at school. There are tons of things you're gonna, you can do with it. Um, all sorts of different bits and pieces. So brush is probably your original. I've got the pack of 12 colors here. You can buy other individual options. I'll link lots of things down in the description for you, of course, as always. My favorite that you will see me use all the time is the Tonic Shimmer Powder. Now, the reason I love these is because they include a mica pigment in here. So brushes tend to include maybe one or two colors. Your shimmer powders in general are going to have one to two colors, some of them even have more. Something like the Golden Sparkle has even like golds and greens and reds and pinks, it has tons of colors in it. Also the Lilac Waterfall is another favorite because you have blue, purple, pink, tons of colors in, but all of them have mica in them. So you're always gonna end up with tons of shimmer, which is one of my favorites. Uh, so these are definitely one of my favorites. They also have a really easy to use bottle. When we get to brush her, you'll see that you do have to do a couple of adaptations to make them a little bit more user friendly. Now the other option you have is the Ken Oliver Color Burst. Um, the only ones I have are the Liquid Sparkles. These are more of an add-on set. I have used the regular Color Burst doing some demonstrations in booths at shows and things. So I have played with the regular Color Burst. They're great too. Um, again, they come in an easy to use bottle. There's tons of color ranges. They come in packs like this. You can't buy them individually. Um, you do tend to buy them in packs. So again, you can decide whether you want to buy packs or just buy a few colors that you like whatever works for your budget, all those kinds of things. So there's a rough overview for you. But let's start with Brusho because they are the originals. I'm working on some tonic watercolor paper here. Now when you get your Brusho, this is my box here. I'll show you this first of all. So this is how they come. They are little pots like this. They have a little pull tab on them. I'm gonna suggest to you not to pull that pull tab off. What I like to do is take that favorite craft tool, the craft pick, and poke a top, a hole in the top. There's actually a mold hole, uh, like a mold thing in the middle. I poke my craft pick through there, and I buy a box of colored drawing pins. I can link them up in the description for you. And then I pop them in the top to keep that hole plugged. And the color corresponds to roughly the color on here. So this is going to be a green, this is going to be some kind of red, this is going to be some kind of neutral, this is going to be some kind of blue, etc. So that's how I color code them in the box and for me that works. This is obviously going to be something kind of on the yellow scheme and for me that makes it nice and easy to pull out the box. So that's how I work it. If you um, do take the lid off they're a little bit harder to handle because of course you've got a whole box of water activated pigment in there. Not quite so easy to work with. So we're gonna put a spritz of paper uh, water down even with my light mist bottle. And I will get to some techniques for you, but I'm just gonna give you, this is just gonna give you a little tap. So I use the analogy of think of color bursts or brushos or whatever you want to call them, water activated pigments. Think of them like chili powder. So just give them a very light tap. Uh, you could always add more, but it's very hard to take that spice down. But you can see how that you get that burst and you can always add more water too if you want to make that color burst out even more. But that is option number one with your brusher. You can see, really easy to use. And I'm gonna pop my pin back in because that stops my color burst coming out when I pop them back into my drawer. Now, as I say, this is the Liquid Sparkle from Ken Oliver, which is more of an add-on product. It's not kind of the traditional color burst. These are just for shimmery metallic effects, but I will show them to you because they are fun to work with. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. 
because these are not uh, water activated, these are just liquids already in there. I like the copper, that's why I'm trying to get down here and get this one out. So you just take these and these are designed really to go on top of when you've done these fun effects, I could then just kind of, you can see here, I can just shake on a little bit of that and it just kind of interacts. But if I have it on its own, they're just like having a liquid watercolor. So these are not Ken Oliver color bursts. I don't have any that I own, but as I say, I have used lots and lots of the Ken Oliver color bursts. I used them when I demonstrated for Rubbernecker at lots of consumer shows. So I have used them a lot. Um, I've met Ken numerous times. They work in exactly the same way as the brushos, um, all the shimmer powders from Nouveau, they just work in a slightly different way. But I wanted to make sure I told you that they are out there. They are an option. They come in um, packs exactly like this. They look exactly like this. They have that same nozzle on the top. So this is the same packaging that you're gonna see. Um, they have this same nozzle on the top. So you would just tap, 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 tap. And rather than a liquid coming out, you would have a powder coming out that you're gonna water activate. So that's exactly how the Ken Oliver one works. Um, and you can't have exactly the same thing. And they're really nice to work with. If I was gonna choose between Brusho or Ken Oliver, I would absolutely go for the Ken Oliver option. Um, and again, I will make sure you have links in the video description. Um, and you can see, I can still spray these and they have a beautiful mica pigment in them and I get all of that dance and kind of beautiful shimmer and I can move it around and do all sorts of fun things with that too. Now, the tonic ones, again, same thing. So they're water activated. So none of these are gonna do anything unless they have water to activate with. I'm gonna go with the Lilac Waterfall. It's one of my favorites. Again, just a light tap on the bottom. I do prefer the Ken Olivers and the tonic ones just because they already have the nozzle for me to go with. And light tap, off I go. Little bit of water first is my preference. And then I can always add some extra water afterwards. And then I can always move my cardstock around to get some extra bursts and movements and all those kinds of fun things too. So that's my tonic version. So now I'm gonna look at some techniques using the um, powders. And as I say, you can use these techniques with any of the powders, the Ken Olivers, the brushos, all of those. Now this is my preferred method for using them. I like to put a light spritz down first. The reason for that is that light spritz is gonna attract the powder. It's easier clear up. And in my opinion, it's a more controlled method for using the powder. So again, think of it, I think like chili powder. Someone left a comment last time saying, chili powder, the more the better. Well, I like to think of it as I can always add more. I find it much harder to take it away. So I put a light kind of peppering down. I've got it kind of roughly where I want and then I can start you know, bursting that color, the color burst. And then I just kind of swim around. You can see here how I'm starting to activate. And again, okay, so I need a little bit more. This one, I want more in this area. I've got more water here. I want to activate this. Again, I can do swirls. I can move, you know, I, I really can move, I play around with it. I can add more water. You can play around with the effect you want. So that's option number one. Option number two is pop your paper down and you'll notice you get a different effect. Option number two is to add powder and then spray. And you'll see you get a different effect. It's a more kind of spidery effect. So that's option number two. Option number three is that we can put some of this powder down on our palette here. I'm just gonna clear a space so that you can see. So I'm gonna pop some of this powder. I'm gonna spritz my palette. And then I can just take a paintbrush and if you had a stamped image or you just wanna create a background, I can start painting. 
And so you could paint into any image. Obviously, the more water you add, the lighter, the darker, you know, you can play with your intensities. Now, the final option I have, and this is sometimes fun to do too, is I can pepper down. And then I pop some water on my palette. There's some other colours on my paintbrush, but it seems to be a nice complementary. But if I do it this way, by adding the water with my paintbrush, you can see I still get those striped colours. I can create some really fun multicolour ombre backgrounds. So there are four ways to do it. And then all you do is take your heat it tool. I'm using the heat it tool because it doesn't blow away um, my water. You can see how it's going to keep most of that kind of fun, spidery, textury patterns. You just kind of go in and off you go like this. Whereas if I use something like my embossing tool, it would move my um, water around because it has a much higher airflow. This will, of course, it's going to move your water a little bit, but it's going to keep all of this beautiful texture that we've kept in here. So it will keep all those pretty spidery patterns and we can start drying this off. Now, big pores like this, you can just keep drying. It would evaporate off. Personally, I like to grab a little bit of kitchen towel because I'm impatient and I'm not going to sit here for it to dry forever. And I just dab in and absorb, dab in and absorb, just like this. Super simple techniques. So, just like this. And a little bit of a dry. As I say, the tonic one's a little bit different because it contains mica, so it has a beautiful shimmer to it. So this is like having a liquid uh, metallic watercolour even, that, you know, is super simple. And you can mix it into any colour. You have multiple colours within that because of the multicolour pigments that are in there. If you get a curling like this because you've added liquid, there is some top tips I have for you. So I have a curly piece. What do I do? I turn it over and I heat from the reverse side. See how it straightens itself out? How simple. Now, if you don't get it to straighten itself out or it still has some curls in it and you're not very happy, sometimes you might have to do it multiple times because particularly when you have water on your surface too. Um, run it through your die cutting machine um, with no, obviously no die plates in it. Just keep your plates in it. But top tip, because one of your plates is gonna be pretty scratched up because you'll um, have been die cutting on it. So grab just a plain piece of paper and put it on your pretty side like this and then run it through your die cutting machine. That will stop any of those scratches imprinting onto your nicely watercolored piece. Um, and that will straighten it out for you. So there are my top tips. That's my comparison between the Ken Olivers, the Brushos, and the Shimmer Palace. So there are some other ones out there. In general, they're much for muchness. My preferred ones are the Shimmer Powders in general, but I have them all here. You can also, I really do like these liquid sparkles because you can then throw in some extra flashes here and there too. Um, but whatever your preference is, check out the links in the video description below. If you're on a mobile device, you just hit that arrow in the bottom right hand corner to expand out that description. You'll find all the links there for you. And as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell and hit that join button to save yourself a ton of money on your crafty purchases. Give us a thumbs up for today's video. It really does help us so, so much. And we appreciate all of your support here at The Hedgehog Hollow. I will be back tomorrow with another trick, tip, trick tutorial, or maybe something a little bit different. You never know. I hope to see you there. Happy stamping, everyone. I'll see you then. Bye.